How can you become asset rich in no time? This is a very important topic that I think we should spend more time discussing on this very channel. And I wanted to pass on to you some of my principles that have helped me create wealth, create assets in the past. And I wanted to share with you what has worked for me. So this video is based on my experience and I really look forward to sharing these principles with you because they are tested and proven. And I think that's what you want to listen to when it comes to creating income and keeping money and creating assets and keeping assets. So let's get started talking about this. And like I said, this is my personal experience. And by no means, this is the only approach that you can follow. There are plenty of other approaches out there as well. And whenever somebody has a proven track record and whenever somebody has created success, you want to listen to these people more than people who might come up with reasons why they were not able to create success and assets. The first question that you want to ask yourself is, why do I want to create assets? Why do I want to have assets? If you don't know the why, chances are you will not make it happen. And people have different reasons for wanting assets. My reasons for wanting assets are that I have security and that I can have passive income and that I can make money. Like to me, the benefits are financial, but the benefits are also, you know, from an emotional perspective because having your own place, having real estate, you know, makes you comfortable, makes you at ease, if you will, because you can go back to your home anytime you want and you can work from your home for a couple of weeks a month, uh, for a couple of weeks a year, for a couple of months a year, or the entire year if you want to, right? Because you make that call. You own the real estate, so you can decide how much time you want to spend in the place and whether you want to rent it out or not, whether you want to have you know certain people stay at your place. You make these decisions yourself. That's one thing, right? So many people want to own real estate because they're able to live in the property part-time, full-time, and maybe rent it out for the remainder. If they want to create some passive income, you know, it's not 100% passive because you still need to manage it. You know, you have certain expenses. You have problems to deal with, but still, it's worth it in my humble opinion. And, and so really ask yourself the question. Of course, real estate is just one asset that you can invest in. You can also invest in stocks. If you want to have passive income with stocks, then maybe you want to invest in dividend paying stocks. And of course, there are many more assets that you can invest in. You can invest in antiques. You can invest in anything precious that appreciates over time. You know, we're talking precious metals. We're talking like collectibles, like I told you, antiques. I'm invested in antiques big time and I'm investing more in antiques every year because it's a passion of mine. It's something that I really enjoy. I know what I'm doing and I know that the coins that I invested in will appreciate over time. Why? Because there's only so much supply and fewer people are selling, you know, rare coins than ever before. And so because of that, you know, there's just more demand and there's supply and so the price will naturally increase. And that's what I'm aware of. And that's why I'm investing in, you know, high grade and also rare coins, because I know that at the end of the day, I'm going to make money and I'm also doing something that I really enjoy. And that's what I recommend you to follow as well. You want to invest in something that you enjoy. You want to enjoy the process. You want to enjoy getting better. And some people say, oh, you don't have to love what you do, but you can also not hate what you do. I feel like if you really like what you do and if you're really interested interested in it, and if you really spend the time perfecting the skill, perfecting the asset, you're going to be far ahead of everyone else. One thing that you need to understand before you can invest in any asset is that you need money. Nothing happens without money. So your first priority must be to create money, to create wealth, to create passive income, to have multiple income streams, whatever you want to do. If you want to sell digital products online, if you want to sell services, if you want to sell immigration services like us, if you have coaching programs, right? No matter what business you have, whether you have a location independent business or whether you have a local business that makes good money, you need to sacrifice yourself to create that business to have that income stream so that you can preserve capital. You won't have capital to play with until you have created an income stream that pulls in the money. It's logic, right? So that must be your first priority. And how do you do that? How you do it is by tremendous sacrifice month of the month, year of the year. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort to create an income stream 
and especially a sustainable income stream because online, you know, a lot of things are predicated on algorithms. Algorithms change over time and so does your income. And so based on that, you know, you really need to be prepared to grind, you know, all day, all night to make it happen. So sacrifice is a very important point, right? You're not going to create the skill without sacrifice. So sacrifice and skill are two things that you really need in order to make money, right? In order to create a great income stream and a sustainable income stream. And now we're, you know, talking about this. You're maybe in your 20s and you're like, well, I don't have any commitments. And so I have more time to invest in somebody who is already married with children because those people have a whole other set of, you know, responsibilities tied to them. And to those people, you know, the people who are married with kids, they need to prioritize their kids. You know, they need to preserve money for their kids, you know, food, shelter, education, health care, very important things, clothing, right? So if you are married with kids or if you have kids, then your kids need to be your top priority and you need to, you know, put money aside for your kids first before you use money for your business. You know, you cannot neglect your kids or cut them out completely just because you want to build a business. You don't do that. But if you're in your, like in your 20s, if you're in your late teens and you're not married, you don't have kids, you don't have any serious responsibilities, you don't have any liabilities, you know, you don't have a car, you don't have a mortgage, you have nothing like that. It's so much easier to create wealth because you focus, right? You have the single-minded focus on creating money, on working, and you can do that. And, and so if you're like in your late teens, early 20s, mid-20s, and you don't have a girlfriend, you don't have children, you don't have a mortgage payment, you know, you have no financial commitments, no liabilities, then, you know, I recommend you, you know, spend the next year, you know, block yourself in the room, you know, forget about dating, forget about going out to parties, forget about spending money on things you don't need. Just focus on, you know, creating an income stream. You need to have skill. You need to sacrifice. So skill and sacrifice, sacrifice and skill are the two things that lead to the money. And you know, you need to, you need to do that. And if you don't do that, you're not going to get it. But the sooner you do it and the more hours you commit, the quicker you will have success. Now, on the other hand, if you're somebody who is already married or say you're not married, but you have children, you have other responsibilities, maybe you have a mortgage payment, right? Maybe you have, you know, car payments, you know, you have debt, liabilities, whatever then, you know, you need to make sure that you also focus on these things because these things can become pretty overwhelming if you, you know, don't pay attention to them and if you, you know, default on your payments or if you don't pay back your loans, you know, your, your mortgage, whatever. Like, you really need to focus on these things, but you can also make it happen. Probably take a little bit longer because, you know, if you have a family to take care of, you know, your children need time, then, you know, your children also need to be a priority and the same also holds true for your financial obligations for your debt and everything else and so i recommend you to really honestly analyze the point in life where you're at and then really decide how much you can commit how many hours you can work how much money you can commit while not neglecting the things you have already on your plate the specialization of skills or of one skill is the most important thing you can do and the most precious, most valuable thing you can do in order to create an income stream. Because people pay you based on specialty, based on how good you are at one particular skill. So specialization is what can make you rich, what can create multiple income streams for you, and that's what you wanna focus on. It's not like the instruction following in school that leads to you being a slave your entire life. I'm not saying that school is necessarily bad. School is good in many ways because you learn social skills, right? You learn a lot of generic stuff, which is definitely important in life, but it doesn't really make you a high income. It doesn't, right? What makes you a high income is specialization in one particular area, you know, such as internet marketing, consulting, real estate, you know, investment assets, whatever you want to specialize in, you can make a lot of money in one particular area if you manage to become you know, extraordinarily good at it. So yeah, my advice is leave dating aside if you can. But like I said, if you're already in a committed relationship or if you have children, if you're married, then obviously you cannot put that aside. You know, you cannot neglect your family and especially the obligations that you have. I don't recommend that. I always recommend you to, you know, put your family first, put your children first and, 
your other obligations that you have but in the event that you are you know single in the event that you're young or even if you're already a mid-aged guy and you just don't have any responsibility you don't have family and kids then you can obviously spend a lot more time and money on your business and you know if you have a job I don't recommend you to quit that job until you've created success in your business especially if you need the income there are certain circumstances that may allow you to quit your job such as you know, quitting your job and moving back into your parents' house if your parents allow you to live rent-free, then that's definitely something you might want to consider. As a rule of thumb, work more, spend less, okay? Work more, spend less, work more, spend less, work more, spend less, work more, spend less. That will get you ahead very, very quickly. If you cut out all the stuff that you used to spend money on that didn't really help you to create a higher income, you know, nightclubs, dating, clothing, cars, vacations, whatever your unnecessary hobbies are in this particular moment, if you can cut them out and if you can specialize in one particular area and dedicate as much focus as possible onto these things, you know, onto this specialized area, that's when you can make magic happen in a pretty short period of time. That's what I recommend you to do. So cut out all the unnecessary stuff, work more, spend less work more, spend less, work more, spend less. Not forever, but do it for some time until you have created an income stream that will allow you to hire people and potentially, you know, help them manage your business so you can spend fewer hours. But you have to understand, and I already told you about this, that business income is always up and down in many cases or in most cases. It's up and down, it fluctuates a lot, and things change, especially if you have an online business and if your traffic is dependent on one specific traffic source that can be taken away from you by a search engine like Google, Yahoo, or even a social media platform like Instagram, um, Facebook, TikTok, because one policy change can lead to a change in income and it can come pretty unexpectedly and unpredictably so you need to understand that this income is not guaranteed and I highly encourage you not to take anything for granted. Last but not least focus on your physical shape. Since you will be working a lot more you will be you know spending a lot more hours sitting in front of the computer and being seated and you want to make sure that you don't neglect your physical health. Your physical health is very important. Let's say you you know block yourself in a room for the next 90 days to take this seriously and you're like well I need to exercise too of course. Do anything you want to do you know sign up for a gym subscription you know go to the gym every single day that's what I'm doing you know go to the gym whether you want to get bigger you want to build muscle mass or whether you want to just become healthier you want to focus on cardio then right so just know what you want but you want to exercise your back because your posture is really important right and your spine is really important too like your spine health is very important if you work online so I recommend you to not neglect that at all and instead you know spend at least 45 minutes to 60 minutes a day you know working out you know being in good physical shape is mandatory for somebody who wants to create success online so yeah you want to spend more time working you want to work more and spend less work more spend less work more spend less but don't neglect your physical health because it will come back and bite you in the hiney you don't want that so this is my two cents you know and I have neglected my physical health before and I know where it has led to and I don't want to get into the same situation again and neither do you want to get into the same situation again so make sure you can really consider this you know and like I said sign up for the gym you know or do yoga or if you want to go for a jog or if you want to do stretching exercises at home whatever you want to do you want to go play tennis go play soccer right whatever you want to do do something do something with your physical health because so many times people especially the younger generation, right? They spend all this time creating wealth so that later on they're going to use their wealth to regain their health, figuring out that it's mission impossible. It ain't going to happen. So don't do that, you know? You want to create wealth while retaining your physical health and you can do it with the right plan. It is very implementable, it is achievable, and it is a very realistic goal to achieve, a mutual goal where you create wealth, you create income streams, you create assets, and you also 
you know, remain in great physical shape, which will help you, you know, work more hours in front of the computer, be successful at dating, you know, just have a great life. The last tip here is for nutrition, and that's just something that I follow. You know, 50% of my diet is fruits and vegetables, okay? Another, I would say 30% is fish and seafood, 20% carbs, and 10% meat, okay? So I'm having a more balanced diet, if you will. I eat little meat. Why? Because meat is becoming unhealthier by the day. Growth hormones, antibiotics, you name it. Not something that I want to put into my body too much. So when I eat meat, I eat the best type of beef I can get. Sometimes I eat turkey. Generally stay away from chicken and pork. I don't eat any pork at all. You know, very little, maybe half a percent of my diet consists of pork. You know, sometimes I eat bacon, but very rarely. You know, I can count the times I eat bacon on one hand each year, right? So that's just the diet that I follow. And because my diet is predicated on fruits and veggies, you know, 50%, I have much better energy than other people. And seafood is just lighter, uh, much healthier fats than, you know, pork, chicken. And so I know it's difficult to change, but that's just something that I follow. I'm not a vegan. I'm not a vegetarian. I'm a pescatarian with a little bit of meat in my diet, and that's just something that I follow. You can follow this or you can do whatever you want, but as a rule of thumb, I'd stay away from red meats as much as possible, you know, because of the health impacts that they uh, impose on you. And the same also holds true for like processed foods. I don't really eat that much processed foods, very little, and that's something that has helped me, you know, be successful and create the results that I was able to enjoy. What assets do you want to create and why? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe now and turn on alerts to never miss any of my future nomadism, dating, and business advice videos. Thank you for watching.